You're still watching Ways. Now, today is Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Every year on, the, on February 7th, individuals and organizations across the nation participate in National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day to promote HIV prevention, testing, treatment, and community involvement in Black African American community. So, um, what do you ladies think? Well, um, are we still having this? Um, what's it called? I think I think we're lucky that in our generation, in our time, that HIV has been curtailed in such a way that it's almost not a scare anymore. anymore yeah. But it doesn't stop you from you know knowing your you know your status. Do you know your status as a I, I don't think. I haven't. Okay. Ah, uh, why do you have to put me on the spot? I haven't done I a have HIV to put test you on the spot in because about, I don't know my status as of today. Last I checked was like two years ago. Okay. That's it. So I make yeah. it a habit to check every six months. Oh my months. God. <laughs> and I think that um, because we've made life living with HIV, uh, yes, we're doing a lot better in terms of stigmatization. I think the um, retroviral, antiretroviral drugs, you know, we've made life with HIV almost normal. Yeah. But it's important to have days like this because you forget. Mm -hmm. The numbers, if you actually go and research it, the numbers are still going up. People are, are still, getting, still infected. getting infected. Yeah. So it's great to have days like this where people can actually focus and say, you know what, let's pay attention to this thing because mm -hmm. it is... In fact, I think I was reading somewhere where it says the numbers are still at epidemic level. Absolutely. But because of that lack of awareness, and it's something that people still really need to drive. I mean, it's so cheap to get tested. It's so very, easy very now. easy so and cheap. Yeah. You make yeah. it a habit every six months, just like a health check. We really should. Yeah, we yeah, should. I should. Mm. So talking about health, Uti, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, so I think that. Um, if anybody's like me, I've been following this coronavirus story tooth and nail. Are you scared about and it? So, you know, you watch the news and you get really sort of into a state of panic. And I find that every time I watch the news, I need to pray mm. to just calm myself down because mm. you really get into a frenzy. Um, I think what scares me so much about, about corona is, is the fact that there's still so many questions. With Ebola, we knew what it was. With SARS, we knew what it was. This morning, I remember turning on the news and it said three people in Hong Kong and this is not mainland China now, in Hong Kong, have, mm -hmm. they've um, been, been tested, diagnosed yeah. with the, the disease. They haven't come across or they haven't come into contact with anybody from mainland China. Mm. And the only thing is that they all live in the same apartment building. So again, what wow. was the cause? What's, what's, a bit what's worrying. causing the spread? Exactly. Yeah. But the, the story really is uh, capitalism at its best in Nigeria. So those mm. face masks usually cost 350 naira for a pack of 50. Mm -hmm. But in Nigeria now, they're starting to go for as much as 1,300 naira. So that's a 271% wow. hike in the price. Capitalism, huh? People mm. making profit on just of course, people will make profit on, all and of this on everything that is possible. So yeah. really, and it was even the, the talk somewhere in the story that was saying that um, we've even because companies in China are mm. starting willing to pay dollars for us to export, that there's also that that people might be exporting so that mm. if, God forbid, it ever comes to Nigeria, we might not even have enough of these resources to protect ourselves. Oh. I think various and sanitizers will join that list. Mm -hmm. you remember Ebola? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sansi, so what's your story? Okay, so I am going away from health to entertainment, obviously for actors and uh, people in the entertainment circle. This mm. is award season, the SAG Awards, the Oscars, and right now AMVCA, um, which is African Magic Viewers' Choice Awards, is coming up um, this March. So yesterday they released the, um, the nominees. And it's great to know that Nollywood is doing well. Like, we took most of the nominations mm -hmm. as usual. And so when it comes to other parts of, you know, other fields, I don't know how Nigeria is doing, but in the creative industry, we are the giant. Mm -hmm. So I just want to applaud um, the filmmakers in Nigeria. Yay. Living in Bondage, King of Boys, um, Shola Shobowale, a lot of them got nominations. And I'm quite frankly, a lot of people are pleased with the nomination, including your people. Yes, yes, I want and, to drop um, an F.I.O.R. Yeah, they yeah. got nominations, which is amazing. Amazing. And stuff. one of the series I featured in, Nkewa, also got nominated. So fingers Yay. crossed, Yay, voting season. So congratulations to everyone nominated. Mm -hmm. Yes, fantastic. So talking about Nollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, my story is quite interesting as well. It's from Kaniwood. That's the um, the Kano, the northern yes, northern the, yeah, the um, northern Kano film industry. industry yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a young girl, you know, because I just checked on Twitter. I just saw Marian Booth, Marian mm. Booth trending and all of that. I'm wondering, okay, what's happening? So it turns out this young girl, she's 26 years old, mm -hmm. and she's. Um, She's, there's an alleged uh, viral video, sex tape that was leaked and all of that. And um, 
So it's interesting why I chose this topic is because today we're talking identity. We know that, you know, I think it has been proven over the years that people that want mm -hmm. to so-called, in quote, they want to explode in their career. Mm -hmm. Especially for people in the that industry, in the, the industry, entertainment industry, in the entertainment yeah. industry, they usually go nude or whatever. So yeah, they look for mm. sensational um, things to do yeah. to to draw the attention. Because all of a sudden, the advertising, what she's doing, she has a mm. business, she mm -hmm. has a spa, she mm -hmm. has this, she has that. Getting and endorsements. And nobody knew who Mariam who she was, was at this you morning. Know, all of a sudden, yeah. Twitter is all over the place with Mariam. So the young girl um, was trending for an alleged sex tape. So. I'm happy we're talking identity today because mm -hmm. how do you build an identity and what is the lasting identity? I think that's the question I would love to ask um, uh, our guest when she comes in at the next segment. But right. first, um, Jane Egerton Idehen joins us after the break talking about building your career. Please stay with us. If you're just tuning in, this is what are you saying, hashtag ways. Now, many people, especially women, are often unaware of the barriers they have created to hinder their success. Today, Jen Egerton Idehen will be talking with us about overcoming those barriers. She is the founder of Women and Career. She holds an engineering degree from the University of Nigeria and an MBA from Warwick Business School, UK, and an executive education from Harvard Business School and Yale School of Management. She has a strong passion for promoting girls in the STEM and ensuring women in STEM industries remain and grow their careers in that industry. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Twitter us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp 081 8038 Thank you so much for joining us, Jane. Wow. Thank you for having You're me. You're looking so very, very engineering. What a profile. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, that's a weighty profile. What? Yeah. Wow. But we, we, we dressed for the engineer path. Right. <laughs> you, you, like, I mean, when I read your profile, I said, wow. Okay. You, you are the perfect guest, you know, to talk about career for us because, I mean, reading your profiles, understanding your background in engineering and all of that and how you have trans transcended to the management and all of that, it makes absolute sense for you to be the one probably helping us to understand how we can build a career. So now in Nigeria, for instance, um, we hear people, like I studied physics, but I've never done anything in line with physics. And I'm sure it's a lot, it's like that for many of us, because jam will just jam you, and you just look for a, co a, a course to just study, then at the end of the day, probably end up in banking, or you see a medical doctor becoming an interior, interior designer and all of that. So what happens to people that, you know, this career just comes and happens on them? You know, do you think those kind of people are able to make a proper impact, you know, as to building that career, no matter what, maybe even if it wasn't their choice? And if for those people that have started, for instance, their career, what happens to them if they say they want to change and just probably, what should they look, I mean, look, out, look out for? I, think, I like the way you said it, that you know, what happens or what you do, that means there's an option, there's something yeah. you can do. Like I didn't, actually I went to university to study industrial chemistry, hmm. but I changed in my second year. So what do you do with the choices? Like we say, you take your lemons, you turn them into lemonade. Mm -hmm. So most times you're not, you, and I think also another way to look at it, at the time you make that decision, you're, very too, you're just too young. You're like 16, 17, trying to decide what you're going to be for the next 30, 40 years. Yeah. You don't have all the information required to really make that call. This, okay. Mm -hmm. You know what will happen? Just give us a quick, uh, just one minute. We'll go on a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 